on my way over here, I was thinking about an article that I read this morning. It was about habits. It was about 10 habits that successful people have. I have a habit. Every morning at click, I take up my phone and I read something new. I look at an article, I watch a movie, I try to learn something else, learn new things. As I do that, every now and then, I think about where do all of these things come from? And the answer is quite obvious. It comes from us. It comes from people. It comes from the things we do, we create. So I'm sitting there and thinking, well, how is it that those people want to share, want to invest their time and give it to somebody else? I think it has to do a lot about passion. They feel very passionate about something and they want to take that and give it to somebody else. That's one of the reasons why I am here. I want to take you on the journey that we did to raise that passion, to give something back. In the constant time of me consuming and learning, I wanted to even out the ratio of sharing and inspiring. It's very nice to see so many here, and I'm super excited to stand here and share this with you. But first, some practica practicalities. The emergency exit is over there. Uh, should you have any questions, I would like them to keep them to the end of the session. But is it that you feel like, oh my god, my head is going to explode? Raise your hand in case of emergency, and I will try to answer that question. So why are we here? Well, we are here because I want to inspire you and take you on the journey that we at Click, the user experience team did, because we wanted to share something. We wanted to learn your things. We wanted to get inspired. We understood that in order to accomplish that, we needed to ask ourselves, what do we want? So you created a plan, and you will learn how we achieve that goal. But first, I would like to talk about passion. What is passion? To me, passion can be in many forms. It's some kind of positive energy that lets us focus. It allows us to go inside of a, a, a sphere and enclose ourselves from reality. Whether it's a game, a book, a movie, it can be in many shapes. Another thing that passion does, that it allows us to work harder, push ourselves the little extra step that we usually don't do on the, original, on the, on the everyday things. So when you have those problems that you don't know how to solve, whether it's at work or at home, sometimes passion comes in and pushes you to overcome those. Another thing that passion is, that it comes from the word pasio. Strangely enough, I, I think, pasio means to suffer. But maybe passion is that it helps us to suffer less, or takes us through those sufferings that positive energy that competes with the negative suffering. I would like you to take a couple of seconds and think about what is passion for you? What kind of passions do you have in your life? So what was it? Games, dinner, bicycling, creating music? Here are my passions. It's my family. The first picture is from Christmas. I love Christmas very much. Presents, family, dinners. The second one is my, my 10 months old son. I love him most of the time. <laughs> Some of the times he wakes up at 5 in the morning. Not so passionate there. Another thing is games. I like the time when I phase away, I go into the bubble, and meet my friends online. I do something else. It's like going to another dimension. And another thing is work. I am very enthusiastic about it. During the last seven years, I have been working at Sony. And during being in a big company, 
I used to work in groups. So by doing that, I have learned that passionate teams, passionate groups, they are more focused, they work harder, and they, work fast, they move faster towards the success of the company. And we have tried to build up that spirit, that passion, at Click during the last time, during the last year. So let's start. How did it, how did it begin? For me, it began about a year ago when I started at Click. Life was all good. New job, new friends, new tasks, a lot of positive energy. So I started attending something we call UX weekly meetings. The UX weekly meetings gave us the possibility to together as a team and talk about the problems that we have. How do we do reviews? What kind of processes do we need? What kind of problems do we encounter? It was something that we could share among each other. After about three to four months, I started a little bit of questioning, what are these meetings about? I felt that I am not getting as much as I want to out of these meetings. Sometimes the agenda was missing. Sometimes the focus was off. I was getting a, bit, a little bit worried that we, as a team, almost 12 designers, maybe 13, spending one hour each week sitting there, investing time and money, and not understanding what do we get out of this? Where are we heading? So I looked up at our wiki and found the purpose for this meeting. And I will re read, you, read it to you. It's pretty long, so bear with me. Let's start. We need to start having a forum where we can discuss, work, and present stuff that concern the user experience of our entire product. This could be planning matters, actual design problems, design reviews, ideation sessions, workplace stuff, and whatever, basically. Depending on where we are in our daily work, the agenda might look a bit different at each time. The important thing is that these meetings happen, that they take place and that we prioritize them. Try and communicate these meetings outside of our team to product managers, development, and other areas. So did you get the goal and purpose? Maybe not. I wasn't totally convinced. If you start dissecting this, it's like, what is the purpose? What do you want to solve? It says, this could be about design problems, design reviews, ideation sessions, workplace stuff, and whatever, basically. So in a nutshell, we are trying to solve everything. Maybe not everything at once, but the entire problems of a designer. And who do we do this for? Well, it said, we should do this outside of our team to product managers, developers, and other areas. So we do this for everybody. We solve everything for everybody. Let's not focus. So I was a little bit worried that what is the purpose? What is, what is the agenda? And a question to you. Has any of you experienced purposeless meetings or agendaless meetings? <laughs> Hands up. A little bit surprised that it's not everybody. So there I was, questioning, what's the purpose of this? So I started asking my colleagues, the same way as I asked you. Am I the only one that is missing the big picture? What are they thinking? What do they feel? They said, one of them said, well, I think it's OK. Another one replied, it's good when there is no agenda and the meeting is canceled. The third one replied, I don't know. Then I started wor worrying for sure. Is it good that the meeting is canceled? Is that a good meeting? Okay, might be okay, but what does it actually mean? 
I don't know. That's like, I don't care whether it's good or bad. I just don't have time to think about it. So there you were, spending almost one hour every week, the entire team, and not fully understanding what's the purpose of this. And we stood there, do we do something about this? Do we take it to another level? The turning point came when my manager asked me, David, what do you think about these meetings? And honest as I am, I said, I don't think they are really good. And she replied, well, do you think we can do something about it? And I said, oh yeah. <laughs> but I didn't fully understood what we should do. So me and another colleague, we started with asking ourselves, what is it that we want? That's the first thing they are, that's the first thing they are like you to take back from this session is to asking ourselves, what do you want? What is your passion? What do you like to do? What is it that you don't like to do? Being an interaction designer, it is crucial to understand your user, understanding their needs, their goals. And we being interaction designers, and the customers and the users in this case, we started, started to asking ourselves that. What are our passions? What do we want to do? What do we want to get out of this? So we started having interviews and talks. And here are some of the ideas that emerged. We wanted to look out of our window. There is always something else outside somebody doing something in another way, doing something better, being more creative. Why shouldn't we look at that? We did it a little bit ad hoc earlier, but now we knew that we wanted this. Another idea, another comment that came up is, we need to have an experience, we need to have an experience exchange forum. In a sense, it was something that we already had, but it seems to be a need to maybe do, some, do it otherwise, do it in a better way. Another comment. UX Weekly should have an open format and there should be a variation in what we do. Being human, we are all a little bit different. So that need for doing other things, new things, adapting to everybody else in its special way, that was something that came up. Another idea. We need to share our knowledge and thus increase our overall group competence. So being a group, let's share what we know. What kind of mistakes have I made? Maybe you don't have to do the same things. What did I learn yesterday? Maybe I can share that with you. So it was really nice of kind of looking into ourselves and understanding these are the things that we like. These are our passions. But we started questioning a little bit, why do we actually want this? Are there any, any core needs, any core passions within these ideas? There were lots of them. So we started analyzing, what is it that we actually want to achieve? What are our goals? Initially, it was just ideas. One of the goals that emerged is that we want to learn. We want to learn new things. We want to learn new tools. We want to learn in doing things in other ways that benefit us, benefit the company. We want to share. Whatever I learn, I want to share with you. Whatever you have learned, maybe you should share it with me. And the third thing is, we wanted to get inspired. Inspiration is all over the place. Now it was a matter of finding it seeing what we want to take in, and looking outside of click and any or any other thing outside there. So there we were. We had lots of ideas, and we knew why we want to do this. The next thing we did is that we created a plan. So why is creating a plan important? 
we'll take a little bit step on the side and look at one research that points that out. So let's go to the British Journal of Health Psychology and look at these three groups. The research article was about measuring how many participants exercise at least once a week. The first group, they were just kind of a control group. They were like, measure how many times do you exercise at least once a time per week. The second group, they were motivated to exercise. So they had to measure how many times do I exercise once a week. But at the same time, they were explaining that exercising is good. It decreases your, the heart diseases, it lowers your cholesterol level, it's good for you. The third group, they were doing the same thing, measuring. How many times do I move around? Do I exercise once a week? At least once a week. They were giving the motivation, exercise, it's good for you. But at the same time, they were forced to create a plan. Well, where we are exercising next time? What time? What location? By doing that, as you see here, out of, let's say, 100, 91% of that group actually exercise at least once a week. So the importance of knowing how will I achieve my goals, where in time, what do I do with it, increases the probability of actually getting there significantly instead of just having a motivation. I want to do this. Well, where will you do it? When in time? So knowing that, we continued our creating a plan. We understood, we had our goals, we had our ideas, but when do we do it? How do we do it? The plan contained a little bit of focus and constraints as well. So we said, well, for how long time do we do this? Do we do it for a year, for six months? and we chose 12 weeks. At Click, we have something called milestones, which is a development time. It's around 10 weeks. So we thought, maybe it fits together with that and added some additional weeks to some unforeseen reasons. Another key thing was that we want this to be for us. We want to use those ideas, those passions, and construct something around them. Another thing that we saw in the ideas, and how can we do this? Maybe we don't always need to have a presentation. Can we do it in other formats? Are there any other types? Should we take a walk? Should we watch a video? Let's be creative. Another key thing was, that we wanted to evaluate ourselves. As this was the first time we were doing this kind of thing, we wanted to understand, are we going in the right direction? Are we actually moving towards our goals? Are we doing it right? What are we doing wrong? So it was one thing we set up. Another crucial thing is this comment, or this quote that we showed at the kickoff. This quote is from Henry Ford, which you barely see down here. He understood the value of team and what team success is. He said, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is progress, working together is success. He wanted to be super clear and responsible that if we want to continue with this and succeed, succeed with this, we have to work together. If we don't believe in this, if we don't follow our passions, none of this will happen. Then it seems a little bit pointless. So we want to build up that spirit and take it with us through the entire journey. So this is the agenda. This is the plan that we presented at the kickoff. 
we had already booked the first meeting. And there were some other ones that we were still working on. What I will tell now are some of the highlights, some of the main sessions that we did. And I will try to share the things that we learned, the way we got inspired, and how it was to be there during those sessions that we did. The first one was called Read and Discuss. So before the meeting, we had the task of selecting a, an article, a subject. What do we feel is important? What are we passionate about? So the team collectively selected five characteristics of innovation that is connected to interaction designers' tasks and work. So there we were, coming into the room, and we knew what article to read. So for about 15 minutes, it was totally quiet in the room where there were around 10 to 15 people present. I must admit that it's not very often that it has been so silent when there is so many people inside that room. A little bit scary, but a little bit magical as well. We brought some candy to get the energy going. And after everybody had read the article, we divided ourselves in groups to discuss what did we think about the article? Did it give us anything? Do we agree? Was it bad? How do we do innovation in our group? Do we strive for innovation and click? After we came to those insights, we shared it with the entire group, more or less a presentation. This is what we like to do. This is the way it is. These are the things that we maybe should have to change. So we learned about innovation, we shared our insights, and we got inspired to think about this. Another topic was, who brings the popcorn? I assume that most of us <laughs> like to watch movies, phase away a little bit from reality. So he wanted to take that spirit, that feeling, and do something with it at click. So when people started arriving to the room, they started smell, feel the smell of popcorn. We dimmed down the lights, leaned back on our chairs. We escaped a little bit from the everyday problems that we have at work. Let's rest if it's just an hour. And we watched this video, this TED talk from Tony Fadell. The first secret of design is noticing. The talk is about habituation. Habituation is a way for us that we adapt to things that we encounter frequently. Tony's example was about an apple. He explained it then. When you eat an apple nowadays, you pick it up and you start looking for that goddamn sticker. It's something that we do automatically. You don't even think about it. You pick it up, instead of putting it into your mouth, you look for this and peel it off and try to get it off your fingers because it's sticky. And that's important to know for a designer, as we always strive for something new, creative, learning new things. And here, he explained that, well, habituation in one way prohibits us to do that. So maybe it's good to become aware of this. So we watched the video and afterwards had a discussion. Do we have habituation at click? Do we take things for granted? Do we deal these things the same way over and over and over again? So in this way, we learn what habituation is. We shared our insights and we got inspired to challenge things, do it in a different way, break the patterns a little bit.
I like trips. Who doesn't? Skiing, bicycling, whatever. There was another thing that we wanted to do at Click in the UX team. So one afternoon, we decided to go to the Modern Museum of Art in Denmark called Louisiana. So around 11 a.m., we exited the doors, took a taxi towards the train, and had sushi for lunch in the spirit of Yayoi Kusama. The exhibition was about her, a Japanese artist that has followed her passion. She hasn't had an easy life. Coming from a traditional Japanese family, it's not that easy for a woman to do art. But she did it anyway. She felt it. She wanted to do it. She wanted to share her passion with others. And there we were, walking in the corridors and taking it in, experiencing it, getting inspired from it. One of her periods was about dots. She thought it would be nice to put dots on everything, whether it's a car, a building, even a human. So, sorry, we took that time and learned about her life and got inspired from it. So on the way home, I asked one of my colleagues, well, what did you think about the trip? Was it any good? Did you get anything out of it? And he said, well, I thought it was a lot of fun, but at the same time, a little bit scary. And I asked him, why, what do, why do you think so? He said, well, it's really nice to see the life of an artist, to get inspired from her passion and see things in different ways. But at the same time, it's a little bit scary to get all of that in such a condensed form injected into you. So maybe he was a little bit overwhelmed. But later that day, he was one of the guys that shared his experience with others on the social media. He wanted to share this with others. For me, for us, this was a really nice acknowledgement. It was a sign that he was having fun. He was enjoying this. He wanted to share this with others. So when we came back to the office, we wanted to take this energy, this passion, this inspiration, and adapt it to us, as it was about UX competence. So we said, let's take the sparks that we saw and share it to us through a user story. A user story is a way in the UX profession is to understand how is the life of a person? What kind of habits do they have? What do they like to do? What do they want to achieve? What is it that they don't like? So we took that format and took that energy, those ideas, and shared it, sh shared it to others and exercised our profession. So we learned about Yayoi Kusama. We got inspired to think in different ways, to think about dots, whatever it is. And we shared our stories through user stories. The last thing I want to talk about, the last session that we had, is about aliens. I believe in aliens. I think that in a universe like this, in millions of galaxies outside, we are not the only ones that are some kind of life, some kind of intelligence out there. Being a team at Click, we understood that if we want to succeed, if you want to take the business to another level, move faster towards a goal, we need to ally with others. We need to find the friendly aliens, not the bad ones. So we took our Hubble telescope and looked for it at Click. We looked at our own galaxies, at our teams. Who is out there? There's millions of aliens out there 
But what do they do? Are they with us or against us? So we reached out, reached out to this guy called Tom, and he came to us and taught us about retrospective. What's good about it? How do you do it? How do you set the scene? How do you come to insight? How do you gather information? How do you understand what you should do, continue with, and what you should throw, what you should throw away? Learning about retrospective gave us the opportunity to evaluate ourselves. There was something that we applied on UX Weekly later on. Are we doing the right things? Do you want to continue with this? It gave us some insights. Another thing that he talked about was about workshops, another important tool in an interaction designer's life. How do you do it? How do you set a scene? What are the things you should think about? It was really nice to see the other teams reaching out, coming to us, and creating this unity, moving towards the same goal as companies should do. Whether he is an alien or not, I still don't know today. I don't think I will ever find out. So what have we done? We have done this journey, but where did it start? It started with a problem. It started that we didn't know what are we learning? What are we getting out of this? Then we continued asking ourselves, what is it that we want? What is it that you want? What are your passions? What are the things that you like to do? We took those passions, those ideas, and analyzed them. Why do we want this? Is it for fun? Is it for something else? So it gave us clarity about the goals. We want to share, learn, and get inspired. Then we created a plan. We knew that we need to, we need to achieve these goals in one way or another. And in having a plan, made the probability of getting there a lot higher than doing it ad hoc. We read articles and shared sessions about innovations. We watched a video about Tony, about the secret of design and what her habituation is. We went to Louisiana to get inspired and see the power of dots. And we learned that not, not all aliens are hostiles. There are the friendly ones as well. So what did, what did this, this do with our team? It made us more effective since we were fueling our passions. It made us more creative since we learned new things of doing, doing, we learned new tools of doing things. It made us more productive. We understood what we wanted. We collaborated better. And we had a lot of fun. Together, we are moving faster towards the goals of the company, towards the success of the company. So one thing that I want you to take away from this, whether you go home tomorrow, when you go home today, and if you go to work tomorrow, or if you go to school tomorrow, or whatever place you go to, is to think about what do you want? What is your passion? What do you want to accomplish? It may be a simple question, but it's not always that easy to answer. What are your ideas? What are your goals? What are the goals of the team? Once you understand that, I want you to take those goals, those passions, and create a plan. How will I execute it? What will I do to achieve that? When in time? Where in time? By doing that, you will have a lot higher probability of actually achieving that. We knew that. We did that. So I want you to take this energy and this plan and create your own UX Weekly. Because I believe 
if you do that, you will also move faster towards your own goals, towards the goals of your company. I believe that if you have passionate teams, you will move faster towards the goals of the company, take it to another level, and eventually it may fly high. Thank you very much.